my friends, we have today we're going to start working on a realistic, oh this is a SCT-74 dual cassette deck. I picked this up at the auction. I uh, paid I think $8 for it. That's uh, You'll notice that a lot of this stuff that I do do pick up is between $5 and $10. There's a lot of $8 stuff in there because that's just where it always seems like it wants to end up when I when I get to bed. Uh, but realistic is realistic. <laughs> it's a Radio Shack. Tandy Corporation. Uh, it has the uh, dual speed dubbing on it. Uh, you can record from one deck to the other. First one is mainly playback, and the second one is for your recording and playback too. You can do both of that on those, on this one. And from what I can find, this is um, early '70s to right around mid '70s. Uh, a lot of these were built from like '71 to '76, uh, made in Taiwan. Uh, you're going to see quite a bit of realistic stuff coming up because I do pick up a lot of a lot of realistic uh, here lately I've been finding a lot of realistic stuff I think I have uh, three realistic cassette decks to, to go over and a receiver and even a turntable I think I even picked up a turntable realistic so we're gonna do the same as always we're just gonna start out uh, by tearing it down we're not even gonna plug it in we're gonna take it apart Take the cover off of it and inspect the the drives in it and see how they are. Uh, probably going to need belts. This is uh, old enough that um, probably the belts, there's probably nothing left to the belts in this one. And then we'll go from there. Uh, once we get the belts, if we need belts, which I'm going to say for sure that we'll probably will need belts for this one. Once we get the belts on it, then we'll be ready to, to plug it in and see what happens. Uh, usually don't worry too much about belts because belts are cheap enough even if it's uh, dumpster food we can still throw it away with you know belts that are only like uh, 10 cents a piece that I get uh, you can tell it's from the 70s because of the actually has the faux pas wood on it on the back and on the bottom and that was 70s 80s and that they went or late 70s, early 80s, uh, they started with all the plastic, with the plastic shell, and some of them had uh, some metal shells. Um, don't know for sure who made this for Radio Shack. Uh, all I know is it's custom manufactured in Taiwan. For Radio Shack, a division of Tandy Corporation, Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, that's the same as what I found online for this. Uh, I did find a little, you know, a little closer to the years on it. Like I said, uh, early 70s uh, to right around like 75, 76 is when these were built. Uh, you can even still look it up in the catalog if you have a, a realistic catalog. There's the catalog number. You can even take a look and see if you can find it in there. But the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start by taking the top off of it and taking a look at our our decks. So I'll get you set up in the stand again and then we'll get busy and get this thing taken apart. Alright, let's get the cover off of this and see what the see what kind of see what we have in store for us on this one. Realistic, you know, has always been a really, been a good, good brand. They built a lot of, a lot of good computers, 
and you know they were kind of they started out with computers from what I can remember always we were always in Radio Shack looking at electronics you know before and I don't know when was the I can only remember when the last Radio Shack closed up it wasn't too long ago around here had quite a few radio jacks. Uh, let's see. Yep, there. They're just stuck on this one where I took that screw out. There we go. Come on. Don't want to break you. Like it had glue or a sticker, not a sticker, but adhesive on it. Okay, same as always. Looks like these decks are pretty much the same all the way around. Has the has one flat belt. Has one flat belt right here, and one little skinny belt here. On the, and this is uh, the this is drive two, and the counter belt is running off of drive two. And same over here should be just identical decks. Just different you know this one has a counter on it and that one will do the recording and from the looks of it everything is soldered in place for the decks maybe uh, we'll see here in a minute there's that one and that's a big one right there we might be able to actually pull the whole deck out of there and and work on it uh, what this guy is here is that uh oh okay that's the that's the spring to let the door open slowly you can actually adjust it but so far everything looks pretty good inside I don't see anything smoked or, or burnt. So I think this is going to be another one of those where we just... Well, it might be one of those ones where we get to just take it apart, clean it, put new belts on it, and... And be done with this one. And hopefully... I'll take a look here and see how... How nasty that is to get... Oh, there's three belts on this one. We have another little belt right here going down. So we're going to have to pull one of these decks out and see how bad, how nasty it's going to be to, to change the belts on this one. Now, let's see, the easiest way it looks like is going to be to undo the face again so we can just kind of lay this, open this up a little bit and get to the, get to the uh, bottom screws on the drive so we can get them all the way up out. Or at least get them so we can work on on them without having to work inside the the deck. Give me that. And I think 
one more on the bottom. Right here. And we'll take that one off just in case. Since it's close. Zippy. And probably that one. So it gives us enough rope. See, I don't see anything else holding it. Should be able to just slide it forward. Most of it's tension on these wires. Get a little slack in them. We'll just cut them all. Okay, that's the power. Let's see, that one's that one, big one right there. It's for that deck. And the one right next to it is for the other one. the headphone jacks and everything. Okay, I see a little, I see a spring here for this switch right here. Thing. I think I can unhook them off of this side. See what I got to do to that spring so we can get that off of there. All right, that little spring just had a Z bend on it, so I was able to just there we go, and there's all of our deck assemblies. Now we can actually work on them. Okay, let's see if we can get one of these decks off completely. We can get it up here and work on it. Alright, from what I can see, there's a spring right here. Right there. That we need to undo. I think that's part of the eject. So we're going to have to pull this little board off here. Let's see, take our counter belt. And hope 
hopefully this comes off fairly easy. If not, it's going to be pretty quick. Four clips holding it on as well. And I'll show you why we. Okay, that's all of our, some of our buttons and our slides and our LEDs. Now you can see that little spring. It's right there. It's just hooked down here at the bottom, and it's looped at the top. So it has to come off. Poker. See if I can get on that. Well, that's a stiff little bugger, I'll tell you that. See if we open the wrong one. One there it is. Yeah. That's for the door. And for some reason I have a feeling that has to come off. Why? I don't know. I'm going to take out the four screws here. Probably didn't have to take that spring off anyway. But we're going to find out. again. <laughs> yeah, there we go. No, I didn't have to take that spring out. Well, we got one, yep, one wire left. And there's, there's our nasty little deck. Rotten little critter. All right, now we got the deck out of it completely. Now it's easier to work on them when they're like this. You know, you can get at everything. You're not fighting with the casing and all that. Now this one, to, we have to take this motor assembly off of here. That's what drives our belt. And that's how we have to get out our belts is under there. Now this one, there is a little spring right there that we have to unhook because that is on Ooh. come on I don't want to I want to stretch it out there we go Put him off to the side. Looks like I kind of, I did end up stretching him a little bit. Fix him up then. We go put it on. And from what I can see, there's four screws. There's this one here, and this one. I'm hoping is not a real long one because it's. And, nope, good. Because there's a. A little arm right here that's right under it with a spring on it and I didn't really want that to go flying or trying to fight with it. We have one on the side here that's come on off there Man. it should be part of the bracket that is a machine and then there's, there's two right on the top here. Oh, man. Yeah, 
and a little little bigger screwdriver. I want to hold this motor assembly down because I don't want it falling off and then all the belts fall off and we don't see where they go. Okay. Now, very carefully, just rip it off. Okay, that little spring, this little spring right here, how's that hooked? That's just a, that's a torsion spring. Okay, move that up. Yeah, that'll be all right. As long as it stays down on there, I know where that one goes. All right, and we'll pull that. up off of there and that little sp stinking little spring come off anyway one good thing is we have another one sitting right over there that we can look look at <laughs> okay you can see this one the big, the fat one, the wide belt. Get you over here. Goes on the motor, on the bottom side, or yeah, top side would be flipped over, and then the, the little belt that runs right here on that pulley goes on that same. Goes on that same motor. So we'll have him and him. We need those two. I'll back you off just a hair. There you go. Need those two and we have one that's under this. And if this is like any of the other ones this should just sit. And it doesn't. This one Okay, I think we can, I think this one, let's, and we need, need one that size. Need that not wide one, little heavier square, square one, and this little bitty one there. Okay, which one do you want to look for first? Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's my my flat belt, so right on the top. bunch of really small ones. How's that one look? Not too bad. That's a possibility. Let's see if we have anything closer. Remember now we need two of them. Exact. That one's a, the new one's a little longer. I think we're gonna go with that one there. Okay, so we have our flat belt. Let me find another one. Oh, 
keep grabbing that same size. Hmm, that one. All right, I'm going to... I want to move forward on this while everybody's here. All right, we've got our flat belt. Now let's see about that little square one. There's some more flat belts. This should be my square belts. This is, yep, mixed square. jumped out at me and that's the one we need. Tell me I scooped that one up too. Yeah, I did. No, that's not it. Mm. That one. Now we need that little one. Okay, now let's get our belts. Let's start with this bottom one. on our cam system here. supposed to be on the outside. Like so. Yeah.
next one. Yes, this one has to go on. That goes on the bottom of the motor, or top, however you're looking at it. And our flat belt will go on there. See if we can get a couple of screws in here. Then we can just kind of snug it up a little bit. Should we see if we can get our belts on? We have to take it back apart. Okay, flat belt first. Okay, with our motor down on there, we're going to start putting on our belts. We want to, I only put one screw in it, and that's right over here. That, that one because you have to there's not enough room to get past a couple of gears in here to get your belt around and on Get this one started. Get in there and get a hold of it with my my poker. Well, okay. Well, then let's let's do it the other way. Let's put it on the motor first. Maybe. This a little screw here. Get the so it holds everything in place. Looks pretty good. Not as bad as what you thought, huh? Now we'll wind up this little torsion spring here. Put him around. There we go. And that holds our little gadget lever in place.
Okay, what? Uh, let's. Okay, now watch the, the head, that's putting it in play, you can see the head picking up, and I went too far. <laughs> okay, put the last two screws in, got another one on top here. Put that little spring back on. You can see it right there. I knew I was going to be all over the place trying to get that little spring back on there, so I didn't even have the camera on. There, that one's all ready to go back in. Got this one, and I'll do the other one and have it ready and then we'll put them both in once I get the other one done so I'll shut you off I'll do the other one and then we'll work on getting it all put back together back in. Uh, this one over here we need OK 
counter. Oops, missed. Hey, you missed. All right, where's my little? One, and two more screws to put in. And this one's not bad at all. This is the easiest one. That one, you just grab it and it sits right down in there where it belongs. Got the heads all cleaned up. New belts. Put some grease in some strategically placed places. And all of our screws put in. That one's really hidden down in there. That one's really had to fall down in there. Cool. Now we're ready to. Okay, let's finish this up. That battery. Had to change out a battery. I'm gonna get the little push buttons lined up. Break them. So, goes inside. inside. Clip will go under the board. There 
there's a, a circuit board with the buttons has its own little slot and it's got to slide down in so it lines everything up and we don't want to force anything we don't want to break anything Looks like we got it. Wasn't the funnest. some screws in it. That one missed. little metal brackets along the sides has its own their own slots to fit into ah, okay now let's to start with let's get that spring hooked back up Like I said, this spring has a has just a basic Z bend on it. Right, now it's just a matter of getting all of our wires hooked up. Same as before, most of these are all. one size. Each one of them is a different size. So the only plug in in a certain place. So it's pretty pretty easy to get them all put where they belong. Okay, I got one missing here. That one that's plugged in there. That it goes over to there. That goes up. So we got that one plugged in there, and that one's plugged in. Just 
going over them, making sure I got them all in place. Just see what I'm looking at. So we got that one, that big one is plugged in there. Big one's plugged in there. Golly, that's it. Now she's all ready to be tested out. I'll get her hooked up and then we'll give it a test run and see what happens. All right, I got power. I don't like that. that one, one of the LEDs is still lit. Oh, that went out. Well, okay, nothing. Okay, let's see. One normal play record in is tape two line mic, tape two, which is this one, and uh, B, B, C. Not good. We have nothing over here. Nope. Okay, let's. see what's going on see if I got everything hooked up okay uh, my my heads weren't coming or my heads <laughs> my head wasn't coming up all the way uh, it just from sitting I had to get in there and I put a little grease on them and then I worked it up and down because uh, this one you don't have to you don't have to have a tape in it this one's old enough to where you can this one you can go ahead and and turn on without a tape in it and I just put a little grease on that slide mechanism and let her run up and down and now tape one works now tape two Take two, tape two, 
if you noticed, now it's working as well. It was that one, it wasn't going down all the way. That one wasn't going down all the way to let this one turn on. So all I had to do was work one up and down and get it moving and freed up and now it's now both both decks are working. You know that that's just stuff that happens from sitting. You have to work it a little bit sometimes just to kind of work in the new grease and all that and and then things start working. I'll go ahead and play play that tape through both sides. I'll play one on one side out here and then I'll move it over and play the other side over there and I'll let you know how everything is going. Yeah, I played side two on that side and side one over on two. And she's working perfectly. No problems whatsoever. I think now uh, I need to figure out how to Okay, that would be out. Tape one dubbing. Normal or metal. We want normal. Okay, so let me get a blank. I know I have. I have one. Right to here. Uh, let's see, we want to. That there. Rewind. Okay. Okay. Fast forward a little bit. Put our blank over there. Side two. Over. Over there. Let's see. Now we're gonna have to. Let's see how this is gonna work here. Okay, that's ready. Play. Got the leader going in. I can hear it. Alright, let's see if it captured. Oops. Let's see, we need to pull the tape out of that side. Move that over. Rewind. don't think it did. I do believe it didn't capture. It's trying, I hear it. It, it did, but it's really faint. Okay, let me see what do I uh, tape. Let's try again. Okay. 
cord. And nope. Okay, that's not, we want it out for dubbing. We want high speed. Oh, that's on normal. Okay, you should be able to press those two and it doesn't start. Then you press play and they both go. <laughs> it's doing high speed dub. Two. Mm -mm. Still didn't capture it. Okay, let me play around with it and see if I'm doing something wrong or if it's just not recording. Okay, I figured it out. Remember this uh, spring we put on? Watch this little lever right here. You can see it right, right there. Watch that lever. When we put this on, okay, record. And play. Now see, now it's working. And that recorded. Now what, it wasn't pulling that all the way out. Or it was dirty. I sprayed a little bit of contact cleaner inside this slide switch. Right through here, this one. Sprayed some contract cleaner in there and just worked it back and forth with with our uh, little lever, moving it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth to clean up the contacts in it. And now, because that's what switches it. See, turns that turns the record off. And when you push record, and then when you play, push play. That lever will move, pull that little slide switch, and turn on record. Because it wasn't turning it on. I, I would move it and pull on it. If I pulled on it hard enough, it would come on, and intermediately it would come on. So I cleaned it now. Let's. Oops. This ha always, this when you're dubbing from tape to tape, you have to have this out for tape dubbing. Then if you're going to be just using playback on either one, you push it in. We'll hit rewind. Uh, okay. Let's fast forward a little bit. <laughs> okay, button out, record, play. Okay. God, I keep forgetting. Push that in. Rewind. I don't know if I did it far enough so it would record. Let's see. There it is right there. I fast forwarded a little too far and that when it was you could hear it real low that was me messing around with it getting it to work. So now the dubbing the dub works, the record works on it, 
and that takes care of everything that was wrong with this. You couldn't see what the hell I was doing anyway, because I had you close up, close up. <laughs> but now everything works on it. So now all I got to do is get it cleaned up, get the lid put back on it, and she's going to be ready to go. There's another one that we saved from the dumpster. Hmm. So now we have a really good realistic uh, SCT-74. The 74, I couldn't find anything on it. Um, they had the 72, and then they jumped to the 80, but there was no 74 on Vintage Cassette. I think was the site I was looking at. I, they have just about everything on that site. But uh, it's all ready to go. Working. And we saved another one from the dumpster. So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I really hope to see you on the next one. So until then, see ya.